Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nice and Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about our top five NBA players that have the most to prove heading into next year's NBA season. But before we hop into all that, you know we got to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today, as always. And today, it's going to be Dia Morris. Thank you so much for like, commenting, subscribing, turning on post notifications, and showing so much love and support towards our YouTube channel and our podcast overall. We greatly appreciate it. Greg, we got five players on this list that got a lot to prove heading into next year. Who is number five? For you on your list Kyle Kuzma is number one And his problem is That he really needs To focus on uh, That I saw Is inconsistency In his decision making Those are the two Biggest things Because he His journey In the NBA I mean he's an old guy He's 26 right now So he came in He came in as a Polished product uh, first two seasons was very good, showing that he was a number one, number number one, number maybe a number two option besides Lonzo and Brandon Ingram. Show some flashes, and then once LeBron and AD came in, uh, he he got moved to the third option and really just couldn't find his his role in the offense. It was very inconsistent on defense because if you're inconsistent on offense, I at least want you to be consistent on defense, and he wasn't even that. Um, he made some bonehead plays, the decision making on defense, out of position, not closing out right, just stuff like that. It's just a little intangibles on the defensive end, and then switching over to the offensive end he just really wasn't efficient like he would he would he can go off for 20 some nights and be efficient but the other nights he's 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 gone he's ghost mode like he doesn't he's 10 points but not really not really efficient um not really finding his not really finding his strengths in the offense not not trying to make back cuts or trying to do things to get you open playing alongside like a high iq with lebron james so really just wasn't really wasn't really was a really a liability for the Lakers um these past two seasons yeah and I think Kuzma's biggest problem is just the fact that you know he's got a mindset that he shouldn't have necessarily like yeah I understand that you know his one of his primary options in roles on the team is to score the basketball but when that is the sole focus for you coming in to a playoff game and everything I just feel like that can be very detrimental to a team and you know I believe that Kyle Kuzma could potentially be a decent basketball player at the end of his NBA career but I feel like his mindset mindset is definitely holding him back he needs to just focus on finding ways to you know improve from an offensive standpoint and defensive standpoint and you know just find ways to help his team win on a night in night out basis you talked about him being inconsistent defensively I agree with that 100% but overall Kyle Kuzma I think he's a bit of a wild card offensively he can be very inefficient like you talked about as well and then the low level of basketball IQ that he obtains definitely has to go so I think heading into you know this offseason he definitely has to find ways to you know improve efficiency wise you know shooting the basketball and then he's definitely got to raise his basketball iq by watching a ton of nba basketball film but our following guy at number four is dennis schroeder greg why does he have a lot to prove heading into next year dennis schroeder simply is just trying to play for a next big contract i mean a guy who's 27 came off of the 2019 2020 season 18 points um really was really a six man of the year candidate really showed that hey i deserve a contract like that earning 20 mil a year but can come to the lakers I mean, it's a smart, a more smart situation. Come to the Lakers so that you could be a good point guard planner, relieving the pressure off of LeBron James, and really just put everybody in the right, right position to succeed and yourself as well. But it just didn't happen that way. LeBron got hurt. He asked to do more and just really didn't show up for them, especially in the playoffs. What sometimes was a liability, very inefficient turnovers. Um, really wasn't in the right spot um wasn't a streaky shooter only shooting 33 percent from the three-point line just really wasn't doing the thing that a that a point guard would, should do on a championship contending team and i think schroeder can come into the can, if he can come into the boston organization which is going to be a tough situation because boston fans organization really are trying to contend for a championship alongside jason tatum and jalen brown so if he can come in and relieve the pressure off of them in that second unit because boston's been wanting a second unit point guard they tried carson edwards they tried peyton pritchard tried Tried uh, Jeff Teague, tried all these point guards, and they just haven't worked out. So if Dennis Schroeder can come in and bring that, bring what he did to the Thunder to the to the Celtics. I think he can really it could work out for him and get that payday for him. Most definitely. I mean, I I think you know another thing that he definitely needs to you know prove to people is the fact that he's not going to be a headache in the locker room. I mean, we saw playing with the Los Angeles Lakers, he didn't really 
sit well for a lot of guys on the team. I mean, when you come into a LeBron James led team and you know make it adamant that you're going to be the starting point guard, it's definitely going to cause some friction within the locker room. And you know, there was even some statements about him and Kuzma not seeing eye to eye to a certain degree, especially during the postseason. But I think you know Dennis Schroeder, he definitely needs to get rid of rid of his egotistical ways. Um, I think he needs to have a reality check with himself. This is a guy that's more so suited playing with the second unit rather than being a starting point guard. And then in the postseason, he definitely has to prove that he can be a viable asset from that standpoint as well because throughout his entire NBA tenure, he hasn't really produced from that standpoint within his entire NBA career. But yeah, Dennis Schroeder is definitely number four on this list. And number three, we got to talk about Kristaps Porzingis. Greg, why does he have a lot to prove heading into next year? Porzingis, not only with the communication with Luka and him not seeing eye to eye and him not, them not treating him like a second option, um, but him is just staying on the court. I mean, 57 games played in 2019, 2020 season. And in this season, 43 games played. Like this guy's just always injured. A guy whose body just can't stay on the court is not really, not really liable for this team. I think your your durability is your best asset. And if he can't be on the court, then it's not it's not going to be helpful for not only Luca and the other people on the team, but it's just not they're not going to get it done in where they want to be. So, and and then in the playoffs, inconsistent in the playoffs, not really helping Luca out. But I think it's somewhat on Luca too, not 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 giving him open looks. They're not running sets through Porzingis. So I think if, I think for this season coming up, if he can stay healthy and they run some sets through him, he can really produce. He can he can stretch he can stretch it out. He's great facing up to the basket. I think he has a lot of intangibles that teams will like that, that the Mavs like. Yeah, I think Kristaps Porzingis can definitely have a potential breakout season heading into this year. I think Jason Kidd, excuse me, will cater to his needs a lot more from an offensive standpoint heading into this year. But I think the number one thing that Kristaps Porzingis definitely needs to prove to the Mavericks fan base is the fact that he can play alongside Luka Doncic and be a competent second option. Yeah. In years past, he hasn't really been that very inconsistent offensively. And you talked about his lack of durability. You know, this is a guy that's in and out of the lineup. And that really leaves the Dallas Mavericks in a bind. And, you know, that's one of the main reasons as to why they've been bounced out in the postseason year in and year out. But I mean, other than that, I feel like Kristaps Porzingis definitely has a great opportunity to, you know, really produce at a high level with a new head coach, a new front office, and, you know, some different assets around him. But Kristaps Porzingis, number three on our list. And number two, this might be a surprise to a few of you guys, but we got LeBron James at number two. Greg, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, people think he's a washed king. No, no, he's not washed at all. I just think with the injuries and the past few seasons and they're questioning his durability and if he can really show them flashes like he did back I mean back in his day like um so I think that if he can come in I think this is a guy who he led the league in an assist two years ago I mean a year ago so I think that I think he he still brings a lot of IQ, still brings a lot of leadership. I think he, he can be a 25, 7, and 8 type of guy. He was an MVP candidate last season. I think he can really come in and just bring that, bring bring some leadership, bring some IQ, bring, put everybody in position, help Russell Westbrook, even continue to help AD. I mean, really put bring that championship experience to this team and help them get to the playoffs. But really with LeBron James, I just want to see him really come out and just show people that his athleticism not only it's going down a little bit that he could but he can still be a efficient player on both sides of the floor yeah i think with lebron james the number one thing that he has to prove next year is the fact that he's the best player in the nba still exactly. there's a lot of questions people are throwing out names like kevin durant there's some people that even feel like Giannis and tantacupo is the better player but in all reality i think lebron james when healthy is probably still the best basketball player in the NBA and he also has to showcase that you know this is a guy that can be durable as well I mean we saw these last two of the last three seasons that you know he's been injured injury prone and you know Lakers fans they understand that he's 37 years old but there's a lot of people that are writing him off and there, there's even people talking about the, a decline in his play which I definitely disagree with because if you look at his offensive numbers they're still similar to you know besides his points to his um, overall career number. So I think yeah. LeBron James, from that standpoint, definitely has a lot to prove. And he also just has to prove to people that, you know, he can still play basketball at a high level and compete for championships year in and year out. But LeBron James, number two on the list, but number one, the guy that you guys <laughs> have all been waiting for, Ben Simmons. Yeah, the Ben Simmons slander is, I mean, it's valid. I mean, he did play bad in the playoffs. He wasn't really, his offensive versatility, he just needs really, the biggest thing for him and the problem with him is confidence. Confidence for sure. And then, 
playing alongside with Joel Embiid is kind of hard with the clogging of the lanes. I think Ben Simmons just needs space. I think this is a guy who's a great passer. I mean, I mean, yes, his offensive game could be a little bit better. I think, I think he took take a little bit from Giannis. I mean, I think at least Ben Simmons should at least have a 10 to 12 foot jump shot. But I, we've seen flashes where he doesn't need a jump shot to score. He can go off for 40 easily without a jump shot. So I, I see, I see the flashes, but it just needs to be. It needs to get all put together. Bring the workouts that you do over the summer and bring them to bring them into a live game. Translate it. Be more mature in your game and your offensive versatility because he he's a great on ball defender. I think he's a great rebounder and I think he's a great passer. He sets his teammates up, but he needs to show that he can be a great a great person on either the Philadelphia 76ers. In my opinion, I think he needs his new scenery. But if he stays with the 76ers and runs it back, I think he needs his. I think Doc Rivers needs to put a little bit more trust in him and just switch up the lineups where he can have more space and really show his strengths off. Yeah, I mean, with Ben Simmons, I don't think that, you know, he will play with the Philadelphia 76ers heading into next year. I don't really see a way where, you know, Daryl Morey lets that situation happen because it'll be probably a little bit harder to trade him heading into next season yeah. as compared to, you know, trying to do it right now during the offseason. But I think the number one thing that Ben Simmons needs to prove to people is that he's an all-star caliber point guard that can lead his team deep into the postseason. Year in and year out, we've seen multiple second round exits from the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, last year in a bubble, Despite them being injured, they lost in the first round. The year before that, they lost to Kawhi Leonard and the Toronto Raptors in Game 7. So there's a lot of people that just did not feel like Ben Simmons was the guy that was going to help lead this team deep into the postseason. And that's why he has the most to prove heading into next year. But I feel like, you know, with him improving as an offensive player, I know he's not great when it comes to, you know, spacing the floor out and everything. But ultimately, that's not really his game. And I don't expect him to, you know, vastly improve from that standpoint, especially in just one offseason. Season. That's going to take years to really, you know, for him to get by with. But ultimately, I think Ben Simmons definitely needs to improve um, from a confidence standpoint. And I think a change of scenery with, you know, a better fit from an offensive standpoint for him will definitely be the reason why Ben Simmons proves every single person wrong next season. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section. If y'all have different players that y'all felt deserve to be on this list, let us know in the comment section. We would greatly appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. This is now episode 57. We greatly appreciate the love and support. Keep liking, subscribing, turn on post notifications, and su supporting our YouTube channel and our podcast overall on every single platform. But besides that, it's your boy Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host Greg King, and we out. We out.